Space. Welcome to the cloud. I'm your host, Russell the Revelator. As I'm sure you're aware if you're a subscriber, I have a lot of theories. Sometimes I take the most outlandish theories I can find and see if I can find any evidence to support them. This is an example of that. Uh, but instead of focusing on the fictional worlds of anime, manga, comic books, etc., I'm going to be dealing with the fictional real world with five interesting facts about the flat earth model or interesting inconsistencies with the globe model. Number five, the UN flag. When it comes to maps of the earth, we're probably all accustomed to seeing this, the Mercator projection. Yet it's not the projection used by the United Nations. Instead, they use this map, known as the Azimuthal. I'm not even going to try to butcher it, but you can look it up. Funny thing about this map is that it's considered the flat earth projection with Antarctica encircling all the other continents. Number four, the Antarctic Treaty. If there was an edge to our world, but you didn't have the technology to discover it until after you had already put the globe model into practice for 500 years, you might not want people to find out. The normal government reason that they would like to give uh, would be that it would create a panic or something. So you would need the help of the entire international governing commu community to keep it off limits for commercial use by any unauthorized personnel. They completed this in 1959 after a few trips down there. Nobody owns it. Nobody can claim sovereignty. It stands as the only place on earth with valuable natural resources that aren't being plundered. I tried to find another treaty between 47 nations that's lasted 57 years peacefully and I couldn't find one. And this example in particular from 1959, the Antarctic Treaty, you're talking about the height of the Cold War and the USSR and the United States working together in Antarctica with little to no media coverage while fighting proxy wars against one another on the main stage of global geopolitics. Weird. Number three, where is the curvature? This one is a little, com a, a little complicated if you're not a math major, so I'll do my best to simplify it. Since Earth is a sphere, supposedly, you can only look so far into the distance before the curvature of the Earth prevents you from seeing any further due to it falling below your horizon. Well, I bet you live near a tall structure. Let's take the New York City skyline, for instance. It's clearly visible from Harriman State Park's Bear Mountain, 60 miles away. In the globe model, uh, 65,000, or I'm sorry, 25,000 miles in circumference, viewing from Bear Mountain's 1,283 foot summit, the Pythagorean theorem determines distance to the horizon being 1.23 times the square root of the height and feet. The New York City skyline should be invisible behind 170 feet of curved earth. Number two, the Alaskan midnight sun. According to orthodox science, every location on the globe, regardless of season or relative positioning on the globe, everybody will experience a sunrise and a sunset. Well, someone forgot to tell that to the people in Alaska who have a, the pleasure during two or three months every year of watching the sun pump fake a sunset and continue on its path. There's no explanation for this if the sun is 90 million miles away or whatever they say. There's a lot of honorable mentions, but I'm not going to get into it. Number one, satellites in the International Space Station. According to Google, there are about 3,700 active and inactive satellites orbiting our planet as we speak. Side note, try to find a picture of one in space. I bet you only find CGI composite images, just like pictures of Earth from space, coincidentally. I know, because I looked. Secondly, if you claim you can see satellites with the naked eye, I don't know what you're looking at because they're only about as big as a school bus and they're supposedly much further away than any commercial plane can go and you see how small commercial planes get um, or appear to be in the distance, but I digress. So if there are all these satellites up there then I need someone to explain why a video straight from NASA supposedly aboard the ISS didn't have not NASA satellite in it anywhere as far as the eye can see. 
nothing. No other satellites, no debris, nothing. As if they're the only object in our orbit. Or they had a feeling people would recognize CGI satellites when they see them. But, as Matt Pat would say, that's just a theory. A life theory. Yeah, man, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. If you're in a position where you can afford to help out a fledgling channel like myself and you would like to, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash C9 Revelator. Until next time, stay free, stay safe, stay armed. I hope your people are never harmed. And we out.